Now, fraud cost the UK more than a billion pounds last year. It's been blamed on a massive rise in cybercrime. Ben is here and has been looking at why. Morning. Yeah, morning to you both. Sadly familiar tale, I'm afraid. Thanks very much. And morning to you too. Uh, these figures are from the accountancy firm KPMG. Now, they've looked at uh, fraud cases and that boom in online and so-called cybercrime. So let me run you through what it tells us. Well, they say that it cost Britain a billion pounds last year. That is more than double the previous year. But why, when there have been so many attempts to try and tackle it? Well, the number of actual cases has fallen by a third. It's actually just that the cost of each case has risen sharply, so every time it happens, it's costing us more. That is largely due to cybercrime. It's risen by more than 1,000% and now costs that, £124 million. Pounds. So let's speak to David Clark, who is director of the Fraud Advisory Panel and the former head of the City of London uh, Police uh, for us, uh, uh, Fraud Squad, I should say. Uh, David, very good morning to you. Um, good morning. As I said in the introduction there, uh, sadly not surprising that uh, cybercrime is on the rise, despite all of the attempts to tackle it. Are you surprised by what these figures show? No, I'm not surprised. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm pleased to be seeing reports uh, of the nature and extent of the problem being much clearer now. Uh, Sir Tom Windsor, the Chief Inspector of Constabularies, reported last week, uh, he said uh, fraud in the UK is epidemic. Uh, fraud advisory panel, we'd agree with that. I'd say it goes further. Uh, fraud is a global problem. It's a pandemic that we need to address. We've seen it coming. The cyber figures, yes, they're worrying, but a lot of these are just using cyber. We've, the, the, the criminals have used tools now that, that are, are n newly available. They've just found other ways to con people. But this is a global pandemic. It's an illness we need to treat urgently. Okay, so if they are using new tools, how do we stay one step ahead? Because it strikes me every time we deal with one sort of fright, whether it's phishing scandals yeah. or other uh, scams like that, uh, they, they just come up with another way of doing it. Well, it's true, and they'll always try to stay ahead of us. That's the, the art of the, of the clever fraudster. The police will always be some way behind. What's interesting about this research, it links in with what we said at the Fraud Advisory Panel charity, is it's about the moral compass here. What you'll see in those figures that's worrying for me is not the number of cases. We'll see larger numbers going to court. The police will prioritise, law enforcement will prioritise with serious cases. What's interesting with this is that we're seeing senior management involved. Now, this is worrying. Senior management trying to maintain lifestyles. We're also seeing some of the poorer people engaging in fraud. They know these are criminal offences. That the story in there about people buying, t you know, teeth whitening scams and and subscriptions to satellite TV. It's the moral compass, and globally, not just in the UK, we record fraud very well here. But it's a pandemic problem that we need to address through education as well. Yeah, and that's such an important area. Is that, is that education? But what's yeah. also interesting in these figures, and it gives us a sense that big business is reluctant to admit it sometimes. They don't really want to put their hand up and say, we've been a victim, and therefore we need to deal with it. And, and it's about coming clean, because until people come clean yeah. that they've been a victim, we can't start dealing with it. You're right. I, I've said, you know, the panel we've said for a long time, we've got to encourage reporting. People say to me, well, the police won't do anything. It's not about doing something. It's about knowing it. When you've got a serious illness, you go to the doctor. When you've got serious crime, you report it. Now, what is reassuring, people are coming forward. We're finding firms, our, our message is disclose, report. Uh, we've seen the awful situation, one of our great brands, Rolls-Royce, uh, uh, embroiled in a, an awful situation. Many companies, though, are trying to do their best in business. They're, they become targets of fraud. They can go to the police, they can go to the authorities, and they can disclose. You know, when they have information about people and it's insiders, that are probably two-thirds of the time research shows insiders are collusive involved in this you know the, 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 the business very often is a victim so that it's I find it very reassuring that companies are coming forward uh, and they're disclosing this because then we can start to understand it and act on it and, and get these people uh, get these people before the courts in these kind of cases mm. David it's good to talk to you thanks for your insight there David Thank Clark you. there he's the director of the fraud advisory panel